turning now to the Bermuda Regiment, it should come as no surprise to anyone that I consider the Bermuda Regiment to be one of the finest institution that has, institutions that has enjoyed a distinguished 45-year history in this country. I am honored and proud to serve as a minister currently responsible for them. The group camp this year was reduced by one day in order to effect cost savings, but still managed to graduate 158 recruits. These recruits were for, were, for the most part, older in comparison to previous years. The camp was a success with all aims achieved. The general public will have seen many of these soldiers on parade at both the, the annual Papacorn ceremony in April and the Queen's birthday parade in June. The regiment has always utilized its friendships with other military units in order to advance training objectives at minimal cost. This past year was no exception. The home unit pays salaries and the host unit covers in-country expenses. Through this arrangement, a number of training opportunities were pursued. The, the first being the 25-pounder ceremonial guns, fired on all parades in Bermuda require regular upgrading of skills for those soldiers engaged in firing them. A UK instructor from the Royal Artillery conducted a four-day course in Bermuda for seven senior personnel who will act as safety officers. Similarly, another UK officer conducted orders training for three officer cadets. These potential officers ultimately attended a commissioning course at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, which has recently revised the prerequisites for cadets attending, now requiring passage of a pre-course before the main commissioning course. This training has proved to be very successful as two young Bermudians, Cadet Dakin and O'Dali, both passed the pre-course as well as the commissioning course at Sandhurst. In expanding the relationship with the Jamaica Defense Force, a three-month full-time instructor exchange program was implemented. Bermudian College Sergeant Jason Harrell was attached to the JDF and, and in return, Staff Sergeant Miguel Williams from the JDF was attached to the Bermuda Regiment. In February, the potential junior non-commissioned officers caught up with over 60 students, began with over 60 students. This is a two-phase program. Phase one runs from February to July locally and involves troops attending at Warwick Camp two nights a week and two weekends a month. Phase two is an overseas battle camp at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. This year, Exercise Viking Marine was held 16 to the 25th of June and saw 42 students plus six Carter staff and 13 training wing instructors travel to Camp Lejeune to undergo a demanding, arduous 10-day battle camp. The students went through a variety of progressive shooting, internal security, and conventional training exercises. Additionally, all students were tested in various command appointments with assessments written on their performance. In July, at a ceremony held at War Camp, attended by employers, family, and friends, the successful 33 students were promoted to Lance Corporal. In March, the commanding officer attended an impacts CARICOM meeting in Jamaica for the military chiefs of the region to discuss ways respective countries could provide sustained assistance to Haiti. We decided to wait until an appropriate time when we could evaluate projects that fall within our skill set and take on a specific project similar to what we had done previously in other jurisdictions. The annual overseas camp was held this year in Jamaica over the period 24th of April to the 7th of May. Headquartered at Titchfield Camp in Port Antonio, 175 soldiers participated in what was a very hot, humid, and demanding camp. The exercise in Portland consisted of the following format, conventional adventure training and rifle marksmanship, a VIP visit program that saw His Excellency the Governor, the Permanent Secretary, Honorary Colonel and I visit the troops, specialist training, section competitions, a community project consisting of the building of a pump room, installation of a water pump, and pressure system at the Sherwood Forest Primary School. Two Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service EMTs joined the camp along with two medics from the St. John Ambulance Brigade. Next month, a special parade will be added to the calendar of annual parade commitments of Peppercorn, Queen's Birthday, Committee of the Legislature and Remembrance Day Parade when the regiment receives new colors. In layman's terms, colors are the flags that are carried on parade. The Colonel-in-Chief, Her Royal Highness Princess Bridget, 
Duchess of Gloucester will present new colors to the regiment in a ceremony at the National Sports Center on November 13th. The Bermuda Regiment has had three colonels in chief during its 45-year existence. The first and longest serving was Her Royal Highness the Princess Margaret, who visited the regiment on numerous occasions, including on amalgamation in 1965 and on the 25th anniversary in 1990. On both these occasions, Princess Margaret presented new colors to the regiment. Following the passing of Princess Margaret, Princess Alice, then Duchess of Gloucester, was appointed Colonel-in-Chief. Since 2006, the current Duchess of Gloucester has been the regiment's Colonel-in-Chief. She first visited the regiment during overseas camp in the UK in May 2007. The Bermuda Regiment manages the Bermuda Cadet Corps and hosted their annual camp in July. Over 50 cadets, both local and overseas, from Canada, the United Kingdom, and the U.S. attended. I am pleased to report that we are, being, we are seeing renewed interest from young people in participating in the cadet program, and a marketing list in September to middle and high school students has produced some positive results. In July, I approved funding for regimental boat troop assistance to the Bermuda Police Service to enhance waterborne policing in the island. Troops were deployed with policemen, and this initiative was so successful, efforts are underway to expand it. The Commissioner of Police has also requested assistance from the regiment in providing an on-call explosive ordnance disposal officer and a marine diver from the full-time complement of staff who can provide this specialist capability. A number of staff have volunteered, most with internationally recognized diving qualifications, as well as a number have volunteered to receive EOD training. In the ever-expanding cross-department cooperation, the Commissioner of Police and Commanding Officer are currently in the early stages of working on an initiative that would see the full-time employment of a number of regimental policemen to work with the BPS, as well as to carry out other regimental duties. This is being done to minimize the need to hire temporary overseas police officers. The outline plan is for them to receive specialized training leading to designation as special constables. I can confirm that both His Excellency the Governor and Government are supportive of this plan and we expect this work in progress to be brought to fruition in due course. The benefits to both organizations and the country are self-evident. Full funding for a new combined communication system for the security services was not secured in this current budget cycle. So we have pooled resources and devised an interim solution that provides for refurbished radios across the services. The regiment successfully tested its initial allotment during the Hurricane Igor embodiment. And speaking of Hurricane Igor, 211 soldiers were embodied pre-hurricane to form five initial response teams. One was deployed to the airport fire station with the remainder at Warwick Camp. A command team deployed to Commons to form part of the EMO detachment and assist with the recovery effort. Troops were deployed immediately following the storm, but thankfully minimal damage was experienced and they were stood down the next evening. The original plan for the regimental band was a camp in Johannesburg, South Africa. However, this was cancelled due to Football World Cup. As a result, the band was split into four groups to travel to the following locations in order to work and train alongside the host country's band. From the 7th to the 15th of August, seven members of the band deployed to Howard University in the United States to join in instruction under their local band. From the 12th to the 19th of September, four members deployed to Cherry Point, North Carolina, Marine Corps Station to work with the Marine Air Wing Band. From the 19th to the 26th of September, five members deployed to the Army Air Corps Center in Middle Wallop, UK, to work with their band, and from the 9th to the 17th of October, five members of the band deployed to Barbados to work with the Royal Barbados Police Force Band. All in all, another busy year for the Bermuda Regiment, and I take this opportunity to thank Commanding Officer Lieutenant Colonel Brian Gonzalez, the officers, senior and junior non-commissioned officers of the Bermuda Regiment, and all ranks for their service to our country.